everyone. Welcome to IndieSAC. Today I will teach you how to correctly connect an encoder with any PLC. Well let's get started. Here we have the encoder and the PLC. This is the encoder that we will use. First before connecting, we must see its general characteristics that the encoder has. As you can see the encoder is of type RI38S6G1M2F3600BM. We look for its encoder characteristics. Ready. Here we have the encoder manual, it is from the RI38S6 series. The encoder type means R for common product meaning a classic material, I is an incremental encoder, 38 is its external diameter, S is solid shaft, 6 is its shaft diameter in millimeters, G is dustproof radial cable, 1M is 1 meter of cable, 2 means that the supply voltage range from 8 to 26 volts DC. F is the push-pull output circuit. 3600 is the resolution of pulses per turn. B is 90 degrees of phase difference in signals. A and B. M is that it includes the Z signal. Now we are going to briefly specify the output circuit of an encoder. Type E refers to the voltage of the resistor connected to the transistor. Type F is composed of two transistors and two diodes which allows it to operate in NPN and PNP signals. This circuit is called push-pull. Type C refers to the voltage of the transistor called open collector. The L and A type is composed of an integrated that allows each signal to have its inverse signal. In this graph we see that the outputs C, E, and F work in the same way in their signals A, B, and Z, but the output L and A each signal has its inverse signal. Finally we have its connections. The F output, push-pull, which we are using is composed of six cables, two for power, signals A, B, Z, and shield, but in the connections we are only going to use A and B. Well now let's connect. We have positive, negative, A, B. In the output part of the PLC we have its internal 24 volt source. We will use it for the encoder. Plus 24V and COM. We connect the supply voltage. Before connecting the signals, we will see the general characteristics that a PLC has. Ready. I will be guided by the most well-known and used PLC brands in the world, such as Delta, Mitsubishi and Siemens. Here we have the programming manual for the Delta PLC. We are looking for high speed counters in the two phase, two input part that refers to the encoder. It has three types of functions that can be programmed. The first is using only the signal A and B. The second using A, B, and an R input to reset the encoder. 
the third using a, b, r, and an input, s, to operate the encoder, that is, a start. Below we have its diagram and the speed that the PLC Delta supports. Now we have the programming manual for the Mitsubishi PLC. We are also looking for high speed counters. We can see that it is similar to the Delta PLC. We have phase A and B of the counter and also the three types of functions that can be programmed. Below we can see the speed it supports. Now we have the manual for the PLC S7200 Siemens. This PLC is programmed from the TIA portal software, choosing a type of high-speed counter, HSC, and configuring the two inputs that we will use for the signal, A and B, to perform some function for the encoder. We can do it using the HSC control block. In the case of the Siemens PLC connections, we can see its diagram. It tells us that if the M terminal is negative, we will have an NPN input signal. And if it is positive, it will be a PNP signal. In the case of the Mitsubishi PLC, according to its diagram, it tells us that if the SS terminal is negative, we will have an NPN input signal, and if it is positive, it will be a PNP signal. Well, it is the same case for the Delta PLC, which according to its scheme, if the SS terminal is negative, we will have an NPN input signal, and if it is positive, it will be a PNP signal. Finally we are going to see the manual of the Wicon PLC, which we will use. In the high speed counterpart, it has the three types of functions. And in its connection diagram the input signal can be NPN or PNP, where the common point is SS. We are going to use the SS terminal. We connect it to the positive plus 24V so that it is a PNP signal. Then we use the terminals X0 and X1. The signal A will be X0. The signal B will be X1. We connect in L and N two phases of alternating voltage to turn on the PLC. Now we activate the thermomagnetic key. We see that the PLC is on. We place it in the run state and we will display it on an HMI the numbers of encoder pulses to be read. We start with the first function using only the signal A and B. We turn counterclockwise one turn. We see that the inputs 0 and 1 begin to flash and reads positive pulses. Now we turn clockwise one turn we see that the pulses are decreasing. Ready. We will change the positive of the SS terminal to negative so that it is an NPN signal. We will also use the X2 input for the reset and the X6 input for the set. The reset will be a button and set a switch.
We join the common point of each one. And as it is an NPN signal it will be activated with the positive plus 24V. We try the second function using 8B and the reset input to reset the encoder. This time we turn clockwise two turns. It reads negative pulses. Now we press the button, activate input, 2, and reset the pulses to, 0. Finally, the third function, using, a, b, reset, and the, set input, to activate the encoder pulse reading, if the, set input is off, and we turn the encoder, the input A and B continues to flash. But in the PLC, the pulses have not been read. Now we activate the set, it is input 6. We turn counterclockwise one and a half turns. Now if it is reading the pulses, now we press the button, activate input 2, and reset the pulses to 0. Well I hope you like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good day. Bye.